Myanmar is struggling with civil war at the moment and it is not recommended to travel here. This video is my experience of visiting Yangon, which is one of the safer areas in the country, controlled by military government. As a Russian citizen, I did not need a visa to enter, I just flew to Myanmar and got the permission to stay for 30 days. Good morning from Myanmar, guys. I'm staying in the center of Yangon city. I've been visiting the country for about a week already, kind of tried to experience it before recording this first part of the video, this first walk around the city. Today I have a much longer video for you about Myanmar, about people I met here, about the food I ate here, about different aspects of daily life in this country. It's rather interesting here. It's a new country in my list. I've never been to Myanmar before. And I was quite hesitant about coming here this time. But then I talked to a few people and I thought that it's actually gonna be very interesting to come here. So come with me to a journey in Myanmar. So guys, we are staying in the middle of Yangon. Actually very nice neighborhood, some really nice buildings around here. Behind me, somewhat 500 meters away, there is the most like central building, the building of Secretariat, ex-British colonial administration. And we are just walking around. And from what I can see here, there are so many things that are like different on a daily, on everyday life level. For example, hey guys, have a look at this one. I've never seen it in other countries, but basically this long line that goes all the way up, it's like a doorbell. It can be a doorbell. You literally can like touch it. You can take it down and the person always there is gonna know that you are coming so they can come downstairs and open the door. So somebody who put it here put a bag as well. But there's also some door bells that do not have the thingy, you see? It just stays here. If I ring it, somebody upstairs is gonna hear it. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I did not know about that until the moment my friend kind of showed me the thing. I was passing by without noticing all this um, ropes and now I see it's kind of massive around here. You see here is the blue rope uh, Literally, it has a hook so you can hook something and it's gonna go all the way up there There is Another one coming from the second floor apartment. This one goes to the third floor <laughs> Okay, so I'm sorry to go in such details, but it's something that I really enjoy learning and seen in countries I visit. Something that is not very significant, but something that just exists in that country different from the place where I grew up. Another thing that you guys can see here is these kind of generators over there, also the green box over there. This one is rather small, an electric generator, excellent silent generator actually. There are some smaller ones in the city, there are some really big ones in the city, and the reason for that is Yangon city, and I believe uh, a lot of places across Myanmar have uh, not stable supply of electricity. The power supply is generally stable at night, but very inconsistent during the day. People have little to no electricity from sunrise to sunset, which is why there are so many generators around the city. Sometimes there are so many generators staying next to each other that they literally take up most of the sidewalk space. I've never seen anything like that in other countries. Talking about the city, let's go to the street and see what it looks like. The buildings here, it's very interesting mix of something more old style and something rather new over here. There are so many electric wires, I have no idea like what is it like to be electrician. Just imagine that you are working as an electrician here and you need to fix one of these um, electric wires. That will be very difficult job, I guess. The buildings here look a little bit worn out. Some buildings are also abandoned and that is in the very city center. But I actually like them. Like, have a look at this one. This building looks somewhat ordinary, but I actually like to see all these different details, all these different... Every single balcony there looks different. It gives a special vibe, like... I like, I like this kind of architecture. And guys, have a look at the streets. One thing that I noticed once I arrived to the country, there are no motorbikes on the streets. Motorbikes are prohibited in Yangon for safety reasons, but I believe it's more about security rather than safety. And again, I've never seen an Asian city without motorbikes. And have a look what kind of cars there are on the streets. This car is Toyota Probox, another Toyota Probox. Um, 
another Toyota Pro Box, another Toyota Pro Box, another Toyota Pro Box, and I guess this one is Toyota Fielder. So it's kind of interesting to see a lot of old Korean cars and also old Korean buses all around the city. I don't know how these cars get here, but there are so many of these Toyota Fielders and Toyota Pro Boxes that work as city taxi and also taxi on Grab. Literally, every time when I call a taxi here, one of these cars arrives. I also noticed that most of the city buses are old-style Hyundai buses from Korea. Now let's talk about money. It is a significant issue affecting local people. Myanmar is facing high inflation with rising prices, while salaries are staying about the same. 10 years ago, $1 was around 1,000 chat, a year ago it was 2,000, and today the official rate is somewhat between 3 and 4,000 chat per dollar. And the thing about money is there are some different exchange rates for all foreign currencies here, like the official rate I believe it's about 2,500 or 2,900 chat per one American dollar. There's also something called bank rate, which is 3,600 chat per American dollar. And there's also the people rate or the black market rate. If you take your dollars and you find somebody who will exchange you money, you will get about 4,600 chat for one American dollar. And you see there is a very big difference. My hotel charged me $50 per night, converting it to 145,000 chat at the official rate. But if I could use the street rate, I would only need to exchange $32 to get the same amount of money in local currency. And if you want to exchange local currency into dollars, that's pretty much unreal here. This hotel room is gonna be my home for the next 10 days, so let's do a quick house tour. Very nice spacious room, we start here with a wardrobe, really nice mirror over here. The shower room, the bathroom is over here, little kitchen corner, little sleeping corner, little working corner, the Netflix corner, and a beautiful window with a view to Yangon city. Over here is a river port with some containers and the city center is in that area. Like if I follow this road for about five to seven minutes, I'll get right to the city center. This area looks very industrial, interesting actually come here. Lots of dogs, some people, some taxi drivers staying here. I'm gonna meet two of my new friends. So we are meeting Miss Lisa, one of my followers, and there's also her friend Johan, who is going to show us around today. We had a simple breakfast at this tiny restaurant spot. It is where local people get off from public boats. Thousands of people commute from across the river to Yangon city for work or study every day. And one day they will have the option of using this bridge, but for now the boats are the inevitable part of their daily routine. And I'm here to join my new expat friends today. My subscriber Lisa, who moved to Yangon last year to teach English, and Johan, who has lived in Myanmar for over 10 years. He has this badass tattoo of Myanmar, and he's going to be our guide for the day. That's gonna be a new experience of taking a river boat. Hotel it's about 10 years of being in Asia, but I never took such kind of boat in any of other countries. Not only in Myanmar, in any of the countries I've been before. here on uh, Sechi Kanamdo, which is Yangon's river island, it's one of the townships of Yangon, one of the 35, but it's, uh, as you can see, there's no bridge, uh, you can only come here by boat, so it's very laid back, very rural, very quiet, super friendly people, so we go explore around a bit by bike, and uh, there will be some uh, surprises waiting. So Lisa is going to take this tri chair, and I'm taking this bike together with Johan. It's been a very long time since I actually rode a bicycle, so I'm quite excited and a bit hesitant about taking it around here, but I think I'm gonna remember how to ride a bike. I 
made a first long stop today. Lisa, she's going to interview this granny and it's overwhelming, like that granny is literally the oldest person I personally see on this planet, 102 years old, she's been living around here, it's unimaginable how many things she faced in her life. It's also very interesting to see how these people live here, it's a very small neighborhood and I see that every single person who stays here, they know each other and looks like everybody is taking care of this granny. So there is the other thing that I haven't mentioned in the video because I didn't quite comprehend that. Once I got to Yangon, I started to see a lot of people, men and women, having that kind of, like, something on their face, something that looked like a mask or a medicine or even makeup. And over here I see a lot of local, like most of people who pass by, um, they actually have this kind of mask looking thing on their face yeah, yeah what, what is that tanaka tanaka so we use as a traditional maker or sunblock it, it comes from the wood we call tanaka especially we grow in the central part of Myanmar. we cut the wood and then we need to grind on the granny stone with a little bit of water we can get the yellow color piece especially the women they apply on by a cheese do you ever apply it yourself yeah, so when I was young, whenever I go to school, my marks are used to apply on me, so... That was a wonderful time hanging around here and talking to the granny. Basically, every single conversation that we had ended up by her inviting us for some fried chicken that she wants to cook for us. Every single conversation ended with a chicken. <laughs> Ta-da! Bye-bye! Thank you! What a lovely family they are! It was very interesting to see just local people living away from the city. You know guys, going to a place like that, that is something that I haven't done for a very long time. Somewhat like four or five years ago, when I was backpacking around Southeast Asia, I was going to very local, remote places a lot. And then gradually I started to travel in a more like city-style way or going to pure nature without going deep deep into local neighborhoods and it is kind of refreshing to to be here the amount of happy faces the amount of smiles and positivity that i see here today from absolute random people from strangers who we just pass by riding a bike it's a lot So apparently, this is the surprise Johan mentioned earlier. We visited his friend Chen, and she's a very bright local girl, and she made one of the most Burmese moves as soon as we started talking. You want to apply something I on your face? <laughs> okay, let's do it. I think my sunscreen is already like not a thing. It's been a couple of hours, so let's try that little local thing. I guarantee that would be nice. I guarantee that would be nice. I swear. <laughs> okay. I'll bring for you. Wow. Take it, and then we will put it on our face like this. Any shape, any shape you want, like cycle or rectangle yeah. or. Square. I thought that some people do a shape, and some people do it like very randomly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anything you like, like this. And I, and I think I look good. And I think I, I'm cute. <laughs> so where do you get this Tanaka? You buy it? Yeah, I buy. I bought it from the market. In your culture, yeah. it actually looks beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Not only for protection, yeah. but also for good look. Yeah, good look. Okay. Yeah. That is really cute. What is my little <laughs> like that? Chen is 22 years old and she's visiting her parents in this village. She told me that she could not continue her university study in Myanmar due to COVID and recent civil unrest. And as many thousands of local young people, she's thinking of starting a life abroad. It's time to go and say goodbye to these wonderful people. Apparently now I look a bit more beautiful in Burmese way with this Tanaka wood, whatever it is. And it's about to rain. We gotta go back to the river, take a boat and get back to the city. Guys, Johan just shared something that I did not know before. He didn't say a word about it, but he is actually a part of organization Sony International that does an amazing thing here in Myanmar. I'm gonna let Johan explain that, but the things that he is doing is truly amazing. It's Johan here from uh, Sony, Sony Social Organization. We provide education and healthcare for children in the slums and uh, refugee camps here. Cycle the whole month of July, as many kilometers as you like, as you can. Every kilometer recorded. 
will be changed into uh, money which goes directly to our emergency fund and helps the children in need here in Myanmar. Ride a bike and for every kilometer recorded 50 cent will go to the our emergency fund. And uh, here with uh, Lisa and uh, Chan, my friends, we already cycled today on the bicycle taxi and on the mountain bike. Please sign up sonneinternational.org. Thank you so much. And we are back to this super loud boat, getting back to Yangon City. And guys, I'm super hungry right now. So let's get into the food part of this video. You know, having food and going to grocery shopping are my primary ways to experience life in countries I visit. It is what people do every single day, something very mundane, and yet it is so different all around the world. And during this trip I filmed three places. A traditional Burmese restaurant, a modern cafe with a fusion menu, and a busy local market filled with people and street food. And this restaurant is the very first place where I tried Burmese food in my life. I'm super excited to have today's lunch. That is literally the first time I'm having some local Burmese food. And for that, I found some real nice restaurant that states to be the first premium Shan restaurant, basically serving some local food from one of the provinces of Myanmar. The menu here is really insane, it's super huge, and it has a lot of real huge dishes. And me coming here alone is kind of wasting my opportunity to try a lot of different meals. But fortunately, they also have this set menu. I can choose between set A, set B and set C. And that's what I'm doing. I just ordered set A. That is going to be stir-fried pork with sour green mustard, fried corn, tofu with preserved mustard soup, vegetable sticks with shen tomato paste, steamed rice and shen dessert. Well, guys, we just got served some food and honestly, that is like the amount of food that we got exceeded my expectations. You know, the only thing that I confidently can recognize um, on our table now is the white rice and the rest of the stuff is pretty much unknown to me. I'm really curious how does it taste. Yeah, let's give it a try. So this meal looks like stir-fried pork and it looks a little bit spicy. I literally see the red chili pepper in there. I like spicy food, but there are some countries where I cannot stand spiciness at all. Let's see if Myanmar is one of these countries. It tastes really good. A little bit spicy, but that comfortable level of spiciness and the best taste you get when you combine this stir-fried pork together with rice. That tastes amazing. Another meal that we have here, I suppose that is corn and it looks a little bit sweet to me. I don't know, maybe that is dessert. Let's give it a try. Yeah, that tastes like something that I will have after having the meat, after the rice, like something like a dessert. Let's give it a try to a soup and for that we have a special spoon, like in Asia they use this kind of spoon for, for like nothing, I don't know why I'm actually having that. With this spoon it's easier to eat soups and aesthetically that's really beautiful. The soup's really good. I don't know what kind of vegetables it is, but it is good and also there is a big piece of tofu. The other meal we have is like an appetizer. There is a couple of slices of cucumber, a couple of slices of carrot, uh, one, one okra, uh, I have no idea if I pronounce it correctly, and you can dip it into a sauce. That is the spiciest thing so far. The amount of pepper in our main meal is nothing compared to this sauce. That is really spicy. I like the taste of it, but it's literally on the borderline of me being barely able to digest it. It's spicy one. The last meal is this weird yellow thingy in coconut flakes. I have no idea what is that, but my Asian intuition says it is a dessert. I feel pumpkin and I feel coconut. That is a very delicious dessert, really, really a good one. What do you think about this food? Like five American dollars for everything we got right here. I think it's a really nice deal and it's very delicious here. And how could I forget about this cup of tea? I ordered some hot Burmese tea, milk tea. It smells a little bit like masala tea. 
it tastes a bit like masala tea. It doesn't taste sweet, which is a really great thing. It tastes like masala. I think it's something similar to that, but not entirely. Masala tea. Wow, I really like this drink. All of this cost me just $5, which is a fantastic deal even here in Yangon. And the other day, Lisa invited me to one of her favorite food spots. So this is Cafe Solwin where I've invited Nikki to, and it's fantastic because you've got a view out over Shwedagon Pagoda. And what's really fantastic about Salween is that they have incredible cocktails here. Sure, lots of places do cocktails, but they beautifully decorate and garnish the glasses here. Yeah, I really like coming to Salween because you've got a mix of both the local people patronise here, so you're going to see Burmese people and you're going to see foreigners as well. It's not just one of these excluded, exclusive foreigner domains. living in Myanmar. Yeah, I guess you could say that, but uh, I'm an international teacher and I've been teaching and working around the world for about 10 years now. What am I doing here? I'm working as a kindergarten teacher, but uh, I find myself also as a Myanmar YouTuber and I'm able to showcase all of the beauty and the wonder and the spirituality of Myanmar and smash a whole lot of myths that people have about Myanmar. Myanmar is one of those countries that are on most countries' red, red zone list. But how do I feel here? Well, I'm an international teacher, so obviously all of the international schools that recruit for teachers here, they, some, they kind of have some kind of duty of responsibility and care. So my school takes care of me. We have Xera as our security group and they, you know, ostensibly take care of me and look after my accommodation and they're, I guess, my guardians in Myanmar. Thanks very much to Lisa. You guys, if you want to know more about Myanmar and what's life like here from an expat's perspective, go check out uh, Lisa's channel, that is Miss Lisa on YouTube. And it's actually thanks to her that I was able to meet Johan and Chen. And fortunately, Chen also had some time to show us around. I cannot, I cannot appear in the video. Ah, uh, yeah. Another day in Yangon and I'm here with Chen at one very trendy, busy neighborhood. A lot of people come here for food yeah. and Chen wanted to show us around, have some local food, go maybe for a little like shopping and just see what's life like uh, in this part of Yangon city. We are now at uh, Leren area. This is a famous place in the city in Yangon. A lot of people, young people here, uh, they like shopping and they're hanging out with their girlfriends or boyfriends. <laughs> yeah, this is called Ledan. Ledan area. Yeah, I yeah. see a lot of young people here as well as a lot of mature and even older people. I don't see a lot of boyfriends and girlfriends actually on the street. I see uh, kind of companies of friends, like either a lot of girls hanging together or a lot of guys hanging together, like this yeah. group of boys uh, <laughs> behind us. And guys, before we could see anything, people started to recognize Chen, and apparently she is a bit of TikTok celebrity in her country, and many young people wanted to take photos with her. This is called, this is called Ong Weilong. Ong Weilong. Yeah, Ong Weilong. Oh. Yeah, so what we have here is some kind of an ice stick and at first I was walking and I had no idea what is that metal 
thingy next to a huge ice tray. <laughs> Apparently there is just ice cream inside of these metal things. I also see a little bit of glutinous rice inside. I've tried a lot of different desserts with glutinous rice and I loved every single one. And this thingy is absolute novelty to me. Let's give it a try. It's basically regular ice cream, but this little rice it makes a big difference, it gives a kind of extra chewiness. The ice cream is sweet, the rice is not that sweet. Really, really nice. And 500 for that? What a nice price. It's like local market in the yeah. morning. Yeah, you see these? Yeah, I see yeah. Uh, a lot of different vegetables. Yeah. Oh, do you like that uh, bitter melon? Bitter melon, I right? Don't like it. I don't like it. <laughs> Like I tried that bitter melon, uh, Lin, my friend in Vietnam, cooked uh, bitter melon soup and that was very bitter. I will never have that bitter melon again in my life. Hello. Is it something that you have often? Yeah, very often. <laughs> this is very nice. Yeah, what is it called? Uh, it's a uh, pork stick. So we got little soup right uh, from this pot and there's a big variety of different sticks, all kind of meat. Also we got some green chili peppers and some garlic and suspiciously looking sauce. It costs 200 for one. Uh, for the pork? Yeah. What about here? 150 check. Ah, 150 for any of these? Yeah. What about the uh, vegetables? Uh, same. Okay. Same. Yeah, these are also, it costs 150 jets and it's the same, but for, for the pork, it, has, uh, uh, it costs for 200 jets. Is that spicy? Yeah. It is very spicy. Mm. Yeah, so we just over with our quick lunch and for everything that we had, and we had a lot of different sticks, we paid 1,500 for the pork and 1,000 for the chicken sticks. Bye bye. Market. It's really, really hot in the day, and right now we are sitting next to one shopping mall and having some really nice air conditioning right behind our bag. That's amazing. Yeah. And it has the last piece of food to try. What is it exactly? Uh, the fruit. The fruit. This is, I think, plum. Plum. You know plum? Plum. Yeah. Yep. It's not too spicy. It's, it's good. Fruits are covered by pepper. It's literally terrifying to, to look and to think about actually biting. <laughs> it actually tastes good. And I feel pineapple, yeah. pepper, yeah. the mango, yeah. same, covered by pepper flakes. Is it sweet or sour? It's sweet and spicy. Spicy. Not sour, it's like sweet and spicy. Yeah, yeah. Which is very unusual combination of fruits with pepper like we spent an excessive time sitting on those chairs and just talking and then i noticed that there is a supermarket right at this shopping mall city mall one of the local chains probably the biggest chain and that's where we are going right now check out some local products get some snacks and also see the price of the products because we already told like the things the situation with the exchange rate here is crazy we're gonna see how it affects the price of the groceries. Every time when I get abroad to, to a new country to myself, one of the things that I love doing is going to a local supermarket and a local market. Here we go at a local supermarket with the dairy section that surprised me a lot and also gave me some love here. Like, you know, guys, the dairy is one of my favorite sections um, in any supermarkets. And there are some stuff here, definitely. This little thing is hilarious. So this one is bubble tea grape juice. 
This one is bubble tea coffee juice and it costs around 1,800 cheat. And the most hilarious part of it is here. I am not a paper cup, not a paper cup. <laughs> European countries where they promote like paper products and stuff but here not a paper cup is a big selling point maybe for this kind of product <laughs> there is some stuff with strawberry and I believe this purple thing is taro taro milk tea this is called this is called uh, molasam molasam but you cannot have in another country it's only in Myanmar this thing yeah, yeah, yeah. let me see Oh, interesting. This is from the leaves. From but leaves. I don't know how to call it. This is from the leaves and the bread and jelly and rice together. Wow. But rice is not the normal rice, you know. Sticky rice? Yes, yeah, sticky rice. Mixed with this. This is a coconut milk. Very generous amount of co coconut milk. Very good amount of coconut milk together with this. Cost 1,600 chat. Yeah, yeah. Is that, does it feel a lot or it's like normal price? Before it used to be like 500 jets, 700, 800, now it's 1,700, a little bit higher and higher. Next to these things there is something else that I've never seen in my life. This kind of probiotic yogurt with black substance, 2,700 for silver pearl yogurt. And these little things are really cute, mushroom kitchen, I guess that's the company name, and that is European yogurt. They also got some choco banana smoothie, taro yogurt smoothie, and this rosella yogurt smoothie. This one costs 2200 and the plain one costs 2000 chat for one pack. So the dairy product section is actually quite huge. Over here we have cheeses and some more yogurts. This one is a really, really delicious one, but quite expensive, 3000 for this small portion. We have some imported cheeses like this cheddar, mozzarella and they cost quite a big amount of money here like 20,000 for 170 gram. There's also unshredded mozzarella 200 grams for 17.2 thousand. For the eggs they have some variety from like regular eggs that cost 3,800 chat for 10 of them to some really luxury premium options that looks premium for almost double the price and interestingly you can also buy individual eggs for 350 chat for one piece so these are regular bananas that cost 2200 for one kilogram and right under them there are some giant giant bananas that i've never seen in my life before and this cost about the same price for a kilo but that's a different breed of bananas these are some really thick bananas they have a small section of durian that costs 10,000 kip, that is like two and a half dollars for one kilo of a durian. Over here is a really small section of fresh meat and processed meat. So for the fresh meat, let's have a look. Here is fresh pork shoulder, 12.3 thousand for a kilogram of it. The pork mince cost about the same amount of money, the pork hip about the same amount of money and the pork ribs are quite more expensive. As for the chicken, let's have a look. It's quite surprising that chicken actually cost more than this kind of pork. That's 14.3 thousand for a kilogram. Here are chicken wings and they cost 9,350 for a kilo. As for the processed meat, I expected to see something familiar here, but looks like they have very like their own thing. Well, here we have pork bologna, 200 grams for 3,700. And for some reason it says sausages and meatballs. There's also some premium quality sausages, that is chicken cheese sausage, 200 grams for 5,200. Wow, that's quite pricey. And you know guys, at this supermarket they do not have a western style ham or sausages, which is quite interesting because Every single supermarket that I was like filming in my videos across Asia, there was a section with some Western products, with some like Western ham and stuff, but not here. Interesting, only local products. The shelves with beverages is like much bigger. And let's have a look something familiar, Coca-Cola. Here is a bottle of zero sugar cola, 1.25 liters for 2050 
chat. I hope you got some understanding of local prices and what kind of stuff you can get in Myanmar. Of course, we didn't see through everything. This place is huge, but some of stuff very interesting findings. I had a wonderful time hanging out with Chen and learning about life in Myanmar from her perspective. That is a very new experience of like wearing the thing. I also met a few more locals, although most of them didn't end up on camera. In fact, a lot happened off camera. Myanmar is a complex country and it's not an easy place to live. People struggle with all kinds of challenges caused by the ongoing civil war and literally every single local person I spoke to was affected in some way. And yet, life goes on here, like it always does. One of the routines that I do at every single country I visit, I send postcards. One to my mom and several postcards to my viewers. I also want to send some postcards from here, from Myanmar. So we come here to General Post Office. I ask for some postcards in the office building. They said we don't have any, but have a look around. I had a look around, I didn't see any bookshops, but I saw these kind of street tables with the ladies sitting. Asked if they have any postcards. The lady said that she might have some postcards at home. So I was literally asked to wait for five minutes till she goes back home, gets some postcards and returns here. So this lady who was sitting here, she's gone home. She gave me a couple of chairs to sit. And that's what she sells. Some envelopes, some postal marks, some kind of markers for kids and also SIM cards. Like over there, there's some food place. Over here, there's some food place. The SIM cards is being sold over there. And this wonderful lady asked if I want to have some tea. Tea <laughs> So this wonderful lady just got us some postcards with some architecture, definitely can pick some. It's a post stamp of five international postcards. Well guys, it's time to leave Myanmar. I'm staying at Yangon International Airport, getting my flight back to Bangkok. And the first thing that I notice here is how empty this airport is. It is about 4.30 p.m. in the afternoon and there is literally like nobody in the international departure area. <laughs> that looks quite interesting. Like, have a look around me, almost nobody. I see a few people who basically work here. Yeah guys, that's been a lot of video and I want to thank you so much for staying with me, learn together about Myanmar, experience it together. And I'm about to take my flight to Bangkok, very short trip, four days in Bangkok and Thailand before going to Cambodia. I'm going to record a short video from there, so stay tuned, subscribe, спасибо, and пока!